無料空所Infinity, an idea so immersive that people spend their life trying to conceptualize something so vast, a true terror to the beholder. But in that sense, there is something resplendent about the vast endlessness that cannot be grasped. That is what Satoru Gojo's domain expansion is the unlimited void. Something that is perfect, standing as the height and example for what to strive for the peak of power. But before we dissect Gojo's Unlimited Void, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to stay updated on my latest uploads. This video will contain spoilers from the manga. As for Gojo's domain expansion, it has this flawless incomprehensible nature like its creator and has also earned the title of the most powerful. Now while not unique in the sense of Ryoman Sukuna's malevolent shrine, what it does have is an almost unstoppable power behind it. To put it simply, when granted everything, you can't do anything. This is the idea behind his perfect domain, acting as the utmost powerful technique in his arsenal of his inherited curse techniques, which is known as the Limitless. When one is the target of his domain expansion, it spells out only one guaranteed fate, and that is defeat. Only used twice so far in the series, prior to his sealing at the hand of Kenjaku, the conceptual brilliance and power behind something so overwhelming can seem hard to grasp at first glance. So of course, without any more delays, let's dive right in and analyze the most powerful domain expansion limited void. To first understand the unlimited void, I think it's only fair we look at the history and inspiration of the name and origins of Gojo's domain expansion, invoking a sense of vast emptiness and space, translating roughly to empty space. It's a name truly capable of encapsulating the nature of its true cause and effect. In Japanese, the name unlimited void is known as Murio Kusho, and while not being completely clarified on what it means, the inspiration is clearly from the works of astronomers and physics, with it often being debated whether or not space is in fact a finite thing. We know that it at least supersedes our preconceived notions as to what could be defined as big, hence why his domain expansion is unlimited. It is entirely everything and anything, condensed into a barrier. As for the void, while there is a couple explanations for the word, the most relevant one is in regards to absolute emptiness. Cosmic voids are often described as the utmost emptiest spaces between galaxies, where what resides is only nothing. Now with that said, I think it finally starts to put into perspective just how vast this power of Gojo's reaches. It's proof that his domain and he himself reside in a scale far beyond the norm of the world that he lives in. Although being stated as a void, Gojo's domain is far more expensive than you think, harboring the knowledge of the universe in its entirety. When activated, it appears to almost erase the world surrounding you for a split second, as it then replaces it with a vast openness of space, again representing both everything and nothing that so clearly Really defines his power. The rush and frightening speed in which it is created looks as though it brings the entire universe around them. Where nothing was, now everything is in place, acting almost like a hypersonic rush or portal. It flashes by you as we see almost tears or nebulas and galaxies in the black void, when all of a sudden this rush just stops, meeting the end of your destination, which could be the edge of the known universe. A singular enormous black hole lays in front of your view, with a halo encompassing its enormous glory. It stares down at you almost like an empty eye of judgement. It is then where the domain expansion seems to tear once more. Similarly to Sukuna, it's like a paintbrush swiping across the canvas of the universe, and as if almost defying the laws of physics, light emits from the black hole. This is where the inner world of Limitless is reached, filled with the blues, blacks and whites of space. The environment appears to distort, you seem to do nothing but float, mesmerised by the magnificence of such a perfect technique, only being recognised as a frightening beauty. Gojo's domain expansion is really a perfect fit for his characterization. Balancing terror and the resonance of space has always seemed to plague humanity. You can't help but feel a profound sense of inferiority. And although it's not unique by any means as a domain expansion, more than power it's a testament to his famous words. Throughout heaven and earth, I alone am the honoured one. A word taken from the figure known as Buddha. It goes far in representing the ideals both strived for and achieved, and that is true enlightenment. 
Now that we've been able to grasp what Gojo's domain expansion looks like, and of course admired it in all of its glory, let's figure out the true power which the Unlimited Void wields. Well, due to being a part of the Gojo clan, which is a family known for being the inheritors of the greatest jujutsu techniques in all of history, Gojo stands out even amongst them for harboring both the Limitless and the Six Eyes, and with such power, he bears a lot of influence due to himself standing as the cream of the crop. Firstly, we see Gojo is able to easily beat out Jogo's own domain expansion, because as stated, the more refined or should I say powerful one will always come out on top as the winner. And due to having owned his domain to what could possibly be perfection as of this very moment, I'm confident in stating that the Unlimited Void is the most powerful domain expansion we've seen in the series so far, and quite possibly will remain so, until perhaps it meets Malevolent Shrine. Until that happens, I'd have to give Unlimited Void the benefit of the doubt. Now, beyond the usual effects of ensuring that all Jujutsu techniques become guaranteed hits, which honestly for Gojo sounds like his usual deal when it comes to showing off his technical prowess. One fascinating ability that seems to only reside within the Unlimited Void is that of flooding the mind with knowledge of the infinity. Despite seeming to be a bad move, letting your opponents gain an insight into virtually everything, instead of slashing or shooting Rasengans, it appears to be a mental attack that renders all those inside, besides Gojo and whoever he's touching to come to a catatonic state, set in a trance where all they are is a husk of what once was. The irony is on full display, as all they are is a helpless observer to their own demise, endlessly invading their mind in a violation of knowledge. Gojo remains uncontested, as the barrier leads him to become a dictator of fate, and of course true power cannot be praised unless it is capable of being controlled, which Satoru Gojo does. <laughs> A technique so precise and virtually impossible by any means, capable of segregating those he wants to trap in his domain and those he doesn't, the power he wields is by no means used lightly, and despite by all means being capable of using his Limitless in the Unlimited Void, against Jogo it would have been nothing but overkill. But the greatest usage of Gojo's domain expansion would come in the Shibuya Incident arc, he was stranded in a situation where Mahito's transfigured humans were killing innocent civilians one by one, and if Gojo were to use his unlimited void to stop the cursed spirits then it would have crushed and killed everyone else too. But instead, Gojo understood the depths and power of his domain expansion, and in a quick effort to prevent things from going bad to worse, Gojo instead unleashed his domain expansion for 0.2 seconds. This was merely a clever guess from Gojo, because instead of leaving everyone on the outside of his unlimited void and crushing them to death, he realized that 0.2 seconds would be enough time for a non-sorcerer to survive his domain with no long-lasting effects, but this is where things get even crazier. In only 0.2 seconds, the non-sorcerers inside of Gojo's domain were exposed to half a year's worth of information, which is insane. The effects this would have on the non-sorcerers would leave them unconscious while standing. So if we take that into mind, the amount of information Jogo had consumed when he first was engulfed into Gojo's domain expansion, I'm surprised he is still somewhat sane. <laughs> But anyways, when Gojo uses his domain expansion, he always keeps his wits about him, almost flawless in each action he takes. To put it simply, Unlimited Void is the embodiment of everything that he represents, almost a mythical figure even in a world where the bizarre exists. His domain expansion is the idealized version of power, something so surreal and out of grasp that only the strongest can bear any chance of surviving. Now if you're not convinced of its overwhelming superiority and power, let me try and convince you why exactly the Unlimited Limited Void puts every other domain expansion to shame. The first and most blatantly obvious reason is because it is Satoru Gojo's domain expansion, because of what exactly he represents, the power he holds and the almost messianic figure he is in the world. Gojo's ultimate technique was bound by fate itself to be something so far and largely better than anything else, being able to act in a different manner to what we've seen of any other domain expansion. Activating itself for short periods at a time wasn't heard of until he did it. Oftentimes we see characters follow the path laid out before them, but Gojo, he is the one that paves the way. Being diverse in the way that he can operate, it lends itself to be a threat that you cannot see coming. And on top of that, we've only ever seen Gojo using physical attacks while his domain is activated, so that essentially means that we've merely seen only a grasp of his truly devastating power. And when we do, it is going to be something to behold, something truly terrifying, and it will redefine exactly what it means to be powerful. But something that is often overlooked by the fandom, and no, it's not Gojo's mesmerizing eyes, but it's the barrier itself. 
I have a theory that the barrier of Gojo's domain expansion is more important than you think. To be able to summon everything is so ridiculous on the face of it that it hardly seems possible. But then again, that's pretty much Gojo's entire character. But in a world where everything already well exists, to manifest that once again would take something so tremendously powerful that I only can imagine that he needs a very special barrier in order to contain the anomaly of power he brings into existence. And not only is he capable of existing under these circumstances without suffering the consequences like his enemy, he is able of dismantling it and erasing it from existence like it's nothing to him. I think the best way to fully grasp the full craziness of his power is by imagining the entirety of the sun residing over in your hand. That is essentially what Gojo is doing, but on the scale of the entire universe. In a way, it is the perfect paradox to what Ryoman Sukuna's malevolent shrine is. And while Sukuna is of course the GOAT, I strongly believe that there is no chance that Gojo loses to him, because by all means and by definition, he himself and of course his domain expansion, Unlimited Void, are worthy of the title, the most powerful. Now, with Satoru Gojo's domain expansion explained to the best of my ability, that brings this video to a wrap. Thankfully, despite being the incarnation of everything and the infinity that is his power, he by no means has the most complicated domain expansion in the series at all. Not mentioning any names. Of course, I believe him to hold the most powerful domain expansion by far. So with that said, do you think Sukuna and the Malevolent Shrine stand a chance against the Unlimited Void? Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one.